Hi, I'm Carmen. I'm a fellow ADHDer. I'm a certified ADHD life coach, and I'm also a teacher. And I'm the host of this podcast, Authentically ADHD. I created this podcast in order to help me reach my goal of helping as many ADHDers as I can to thrive instead of just survive. Are you ready to jump in? Let's get started. Hi, friend, and welcome back to Authentically ADHD. And if you are a new listener, welcome to the tribe, my friend. How how are you? I I just want to I want to start out today by telling you how grateful I am that you give me your time, that you choose to listen to this podcast. I know that you have so many choices and time is very expensive as we will talk about in this episode. Time is something that is worth a lot. So the fact that you decided to spend your time with me, I appreciate that so much. If you have a few seconds and you can scroll up to the top of your app and shoot me a rating or a review or both, I would so appreciate it. And I will definitely shout it out on one of my next episodes. So I'm be honest, I have had a rough week last week. And then I put out a poll for this week's episode, for this exact episode, and then I realized that the two topics go together. Schedules and routines and time blindness. Those are the two choices. Isn't that funny? They totally go together. Because you can't create a schedule or a routine without being educated on time blindness and how that has to do with our ADHD brains. So have you ever like written out a full day's schedule and then found yourself still working way past your planned time or feeling like you didn't get anything done or you look up at the clock and you're like, oh my gosh, it's such and such time already and I only got one and two done and not not six, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, you know? Um, how about like routine change, like changes in seasons or jobs, things in life that change, marriage, kids, anything that can create a new routine that you aren't acclimated with. How does that make you feel? Sometimes I do all right, but this summer it's been really difficult to switch from work brain to summer brain. Do you sometimes feel like you can't even sense the time that has gone by and like all of a sudden it's 9 p.m. and you've lost track of the time like the whole day? Let me just say, you are not alone, my friend. Our ADHD brains are structurally different, and a big impact is on our perception of time. In simple words, in the research that I've read, people with ADHD have very little perception of the passing of time. So literally meaning we can't really feel that sense of the passing of time In neurotypical people, they develop this skill during childhood. ADHD brains never develop in that way unless we are directly taught. This is why making time super visible is super important. According to Dr. Barkley, one of of ADHD's legends, um, ADHDers are what he lovingly calls time blind, meaning our skill of looking into the past to perform in the present while thinking about the future is that skill is um it's deficient and we have to work harder to strengthen it so our perception of time is in the now or the not now so it's never like in five years it's like that's just not now that's later or it's now right now today what i'm doing a podcast Um, it's just, it's really great sometimes, but when it's time to plan and schedule and make appointments and do work and live an adult life, it really becomes super unhelpful. Time perception and time management is, you can't manage time. I just want to start off with that. It's time perception and time management is actually management of your mind. So it's 
the management of time, the construct of time in your mind. Those are the skills that are needed to plan, produce, and follow through. Again, our brains were built differently. The parts of our brains that predict time, that remember, you know, our working memory, and keep track of time and time passing while doing a task, those parts of our brain are underdeveloped. They don't work as well as other people's. This is why when you plan for something to take an hour and it takes two or three, and I want to ask you, what do you think about yourself when that happens? I mean, if that's ever happened. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. It's definitely happened to me. Um, see, what you think and feel about yourself in those moments is really the most important. Because if your thoughts about yourself are that you suck and that you just never have enough time, that you suck at time management, that you will never ever have enough time, that you will always be running late, and that you won't ever be able to manage your mind within the concept of time, you will never, ever, ever be able to manage your mind within time. Because if you think you can't, you can't. I'm just telling you. I'm just saying. I want you to think about the phrase time management. Can we manage something that like we can't even touch or feel? or hear, or see for that matter? No. Like, just think about time as it is, not a clock. Like, sure, if you meet a sundial, you could see time, but like, let's think about it in a, in a little bit of a higher sense. We can only really manage our mind around time and the management of it. We cannot manage something we cannot touch, change, or stop. Time is a concept, and our perception and processing speed, they really affect our management of it. We are unable to plan accurately because predicting time is incredibly hard, and it's affected by our underdeveloped prefrontal cortex. In simple terms, all of this defines time blindness. It impacts all parts of ADHD, life, work, relationships, personal development, etc., time the only the, the really interesting thing about time that I want to share with you that my coach taught me is we may not all be born with the same privilege right we're not all born with the same amount of money we're not all born the same gender race anything like that we're not all born with the same opportunities but we are all born into a world where we all have the same amount of time. Isn't that crazy? It's like one of the only equalizers of humanity besides shame, guilt, fear, and joy is time. And those emotions can't even really be measured. So really time is the big equalizer across humanity. It's insane. So if you think about it that way, well, you know, if Mel Robbins has enough time to get all the stuff she does in a day done. And she just said she had ADHD. You know, she just came out with that podcast. Check it out if you haven't um, listened. It's pretty good. Um, but she gets all this stuff done. She didn't even know she had ADHD until she was in her 40s. So like I said, you're, you're not alone. Just this morning, I got distracted talking with my dad. And I didn't realize that like two hours had gone by. And we were both like late for what we needed to do. <laughs> So, okay, prepare yourself because the next part is something that most ADHDers' brains uh, like to reject. Hey, listener, if you're looking for a little bit more in setting and reaching your goals or any other part of my podcast you have two options below you can join focused and we both get a credit to our account or you can sign up for a free 30 minute coaching call with me in the second link do either one if you feel like you want more support in these areas thanks talk to you soon
So reject may be a strong word, but we're kind of resistant to this concept, and it is routines. We can't stand them, but we can't live without them. We really can't. I mean, think about it. How do you feel when you're thrown off of your regular routine? We all have some type of routine, whether it's on purpose or not. You, you have things that you do every day in a certain order, the way that you do them. It's just a matter of noticing your routines and individualizing them for you. That, I hope, makes it a little less scary. But this is also why I visualize and create survival checklists for morning and evening. During the year, I have a pretty set schedule due to teaching, but in the summer, the lack of schedule and routine used to result in me starting and not finishing projects and not getting anything really done, like organizing stuff for the next year or creating things that I thought of in the previous school year that I need for the next year or creating that coaching program I really wanted to create. And if you have ADHD and you work from home all the time, it's like way more important to create schedules for your days. You don't find yourself bouncing from task to task and then spinning out in overwhelm, not really ever getting anything done except for at the last minute or late and you're just living in constant stress. Instead of controlling your day, when we don't make well-structured schedules specific to our brains, our day controls us. We spend the day reacting to it. And there are a lot of reasons why we as ADHDers are resistant to following routines and schedules. One reason is oppositional defiant disorder. ODD is a type of defiance that is usually directed towards anything that may control us. And Dr. Barkley has stated that ODD comes along with ADHD. It's pretty much like an underdiagnosis. So like if you have ADHD, you also have oppositional defiant disorder, which means anything that wants to control you or tell you what to do, even your own brain, you don't like it. You don't want to do it. <laughs> this is why I think of my daily planning and schedule of me taking control of my day instead of my day controlling me or me just reacting to the day, the whole day. Because that usually just results in spinning at night and not being able to sleep because I'm stressed because I got quote unquote nothing done. Another reason is that we, uh, in our black and white minded thoughts, we fear putting in the quote unquote wrong things on our schedule. But are there really right and wrong things? that you have on your to-do list? I mean, unless you're planning on doing something illegal or like murdering somebody or going against your values, I mean, please try to prioritize without worrying about right and wrong because usually in our brains, right and wrong is actually what we're thinking of as happy or unhappy. So just keep that in mind. Another big reason that we resist making schedules and following routines is that we don't believe we can follow it consistently. Well, I have some good news for you is that my amazing coach again has taught me um, that ADHDers are rarely consistent and that's okay. We can still be successful as fuck and not be consistent. When you have ADHD, you will not fell through perfectly every day. You will not be consistent and that's okay. The key is persistence. This has changed my life. Miss a day, no big deal. Get up and do it the next day and try again. Fail, fail again, fail better. Seriously, keep trying. Persistence is the act of keep, like you keep getting up even though you're knocked down. Consistency means you do it every day. Persistence means no matter how many times I fail, I'm going to get back up and I'm going to try again. Persistence is key. So again, <laughs> a lot of times we fail once and then we give up, usually because we've paired that fail with a ton of negative self-talk. Again, we find ourselves in black and white thinking, unable to readjust our routines and just saying, I can't follow a schedule, so I don't make one. This might be you. 
So I have a question. How's it working out for you? Are you making your day's work for you? Or are you creating more work for yourself? Just curious. If you believe the thought, I'm no good at planning or following through, your brain will go to work to prove that true. It will bring you all this evidence, and since ADHDers are not really great at following routines and schedules without practice, your brain has plenty of evidence that you suck at schedules and routines. So you could pretty much convince yourself in a second that you suck at planning and following through, so you're just not going to do it. That, my friend, is called failing ahead of time. I just have a side note here. If you ever feel like you need more support with any of these topics, go down to the link in my show notes. Sign up for a free coaching call with me or use the link in my show notes to join Focused, the ADHD program for adults created and run by Kristen Carter of the I Have ADHD podcast and the new podcast, Maybe I'm Not the Problem. By using my link, You'll get money off your first month, and I get a credit to my account. Wins all around. So, you know that I never leave you without tips and strategies to work with your ADHD brain instead of fighting against it. That I will help you to make it work for you instead of more work for you, okay? So there is a freebie in the show notes as well for you to reference if you learn better that way because... I do, so that's why I make them. So before I give you the tips, though, I want to invite you to try your best not to allow perfectionism here. It's going to be hard, but it will only hold it up, like it will only hold you up and take away from your autonomy, okay? At the top of every schedule every day, I write no perfectionism allowed, okay? All right, you ready? All right, no perfectionism allowed, so here we go. Here are my top five tips to creating ADHD-friendly routines and schedules. One, believe that you can follow the routines and schedules that you create for yourself. If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that our thoughts and feelings always influence our results. So in order to do what you want or need to do, you have to first believe that you can, okay? And I'm not talking about like fluffy, I'm believing in, it's actual belief that, hey, maybe I, I can follow a schedule. I mean, I used to think of some examples that proves it true to your brain that you can follow a schedule. Number two, schedule in your free time and procrastination or buffer time first. Yes, I said schedule your free time, procrastination, and buffer time first. This helps the ADHD brain see that there are times for it to be quote-unquote free. This also allows for disruptions, mistimed tasks, and time to give your brain a break because we as neurospicy people need extra breaks. Our brains cannot be overtaxed. Number three, Use a visual schedule and do not fill it up. Please don't fill it up. Please, please don't fill it up. You need to leave space in there, buffer space. I personally use an app called Sansama. I used the free version for a while and I really liked it. Um, And so I bought the trial and it's kind of cheap. I forget how much it is. No, this is not sponsored by Sansama, but if they would like to, they can. Um, It syncs to my Google Calendar, and that helps me time my tasks. It helps me time block my days, and it helps me go full screen during work time. And I have a regular routine and schedules that I follow. I can move tasks around, remake routines, and when they start to bore me, I can, like, make new ones. The app also warns you when you are planning like it starts like the little box turns red when you have scheduled eight more than eight hours of work or when you're nearing on eight hours of work it asks you if you want to push or delete any of the tasks like push the task the next day or delete some tasks because it's telling you that it's not healthy 
to work, to have work time for longer than eight hours. How smart is that? Such a great app. Such a great app. So, visual schedule and don't fill it up. Number four, decide on purpose what you want or need to do. This is how I created my very simple morning and night survival checklists. Meds, morning work, physical activity, food, and water in the morning. At night, wash my face and turn the lights off and make sure I've blown out any candles. Literally, that's it. Oh, brush teeth one of the times. <laughs> that's it. Very basic. Please try to stay away from fantasy schedules that are unachievable. It will make you feel terrible. <laughs> And it may lead you to not even creating routines or schedules again. Number five, after writing out your to-dos, break them down into the smallest parts possible. Then put how much time that part of the task will take next to it. Then multiply it by two. I know you just rolled your eyes or huffed at me, but see, ADHDers are not good at time perception. Remember, we are not good at predicting time or, or the future or how long something will take unless we've done and timed the task before a lot so unless you've done that and you know exactly how long it takes it takes you then times the number by two bonus tip give yourself grace please please give yourself grace whether you're a mom a dad you don't have kids you have a full or part-time job etc ADHD makes life harder and giving yourself grace is the kindest thing you can do to yourself. So as a recap, ADHDers are time blind. We don't sense the passing of time, which is sometimes why we reject schedules and routines. Top five tips. One, believe that you can. Two, Schedule free time and procrastination or buffer time first. Three, use a visual schedule and don't fill it up. Four, decide on purpose what you want slash need to do. And five, after writing out your to-dos, break them down into the smallest parts possible. Then put how much time that task will take next to it, then multiply it by two. And give yourself grace, my friends. Feel free to use the freebie in my show notes. Visit my website for any other information or fun things I have going on, like my book club. And I will talk to you soon. Stay authentic, my friends.